Wherever the military goes, something gets left behind. That's simply a fact of life. And for the military, it goes with the territory. Sometimes those things are very small, and other times they're very big. What many of them have in common is that there are fascinating stories behind their abandonment, and we're going to check out some of those fascinating stories now. Gunkanjima Island isn't a name that exactly rolls off the tongue, but perhaps you've heard of this place as Hashima Island or Battleship Island. Situated off Nagasaki's coast, this walled island looks more like a fortress than a place where people used to live. The Mitsubishi Corporation developed the site during the first years of the 20th century because they wanted to mine the huge coal deposit underneath it and staffed it with Korean immigrants who were essentially forced to work there. As the site grew, high-rise apartments were built on the rocky island to accommodate the workers, eventually joined by restaurants, schools, and hospitals. 6,000 people called it home, and it was developing towards being a fully-fledged town. But then the coal suddenly ran out in the mid-1950s. Everybody immediately left, and nobody's lived there since. Japan prohibited entry to the island until 2009, but has relented in more recent years. Visitors who've been since say the site is like a time capsule, with old newspapers still on tables in the apartment buildings. As for the island's military connection, unfortunately, Hashima Island was used as a forced labor camp during the Second World War. Whenever you hear the word pyramids, you'll think of Egypt. But it's not just Egypt that has pyramids. The Americans have one of their own in North Dakota, you won't find many tourists scrambling to have their picture taken here, though. The Grand Pyramid is the central focus of the Stanley R. Mickelson Safeguard Program, which can be found in Nakoma. The entire site opened up during the 1960s and was intended to be a multi-billion dollar state-of-the-art anti-missile system capable of shooting rockets out of the air in the event of a Russian attack. The pyramid is, by 1960 standards, an advanced radar system, and it's surrounded by missile silos, which were full of surface-to-air thermonuclear missiles. The strategy of the site was to shoot down any rockets fired by Russia as they cruised over Canada. We wonder how the Canadians felt about that. Incredibly, due to safety issues and concerns that the equipment didn't function as anticipated, it was shut down after a mere three days of operation with all the tunnels below the surface flooded to prevent anyone from getting in. Now it stands silent as a reminder of one of America's most expensive military mishaps. Johnston Atoll, which is sometimes also known as Kalama Atoll, is a Pacific Ocean territory of the United States of America and is currently controlled by the USA's Fish and Wildlife Service as a national wildlife refuge. The atoll and some of its surrounding islands make up the Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monument. More importantly than that, though, Johnston Atoll spent 70 years under the control of the U.S. military. During those decades, it was used as an airbase, a naval fuel deposit, and a testing site for enormously controversial biological and nuclear weapons. Various chemical weapons were stored on the atoll, including Agent Orange. So much damage was done to the atoll and its environment during those weapons tests that it remains contaminated today and is off-limits to anybody who doesn't have an official letter of authorization from the U.S. Air Force and a permit from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to approach the island. Such is the level of security and secrecy about the atoll that there are some people who suspect that the U.S. military still uses it for top-secret purposes to this day. Russia is a particularly good place to go looking for unwanted or unused military equipment, and we have the perfect example to prove that. If you were to visit the forests of Leningrad Oblast in Russia and do a little walking, you'd eventually find a clearing in which two enormous rockets are rotting away in the open. One of them is a Zenith rocket, and the other is a Molniya. The launchers are believed to be relics of the former Soviet space mission, although it's just as possible that they were designed with offensive purposes in mind. 
There's no security here and no fences, so there's nothing to stop people from climbing all over the rockets to take pictures for social media. Nobody seems to know how long the Molnia and the Zenith have been here, but based on their appearance and what we know about the launchers, it's safe to assume that it's been well over 20 years. We wonder how much longer they'll sit here before somebody comes to retrieve them. Every year, thousands of people stroll by Fort Tilden in Queens, New York without knowing what it is. To them, it appears to be a bizarre concrete ruin that is gradually being overwhelmed by nature. In truth, this was originally a military castle on the coast. Fort Tilden was previously part of the United States of America's Atlantic Sea Wall Defense System. It was, in fact, the most crucial component of the system. The base was created by the government in 1917 to protect against the new challenges brought by the First World War. At the time, it served as a deterrent against German U-boats, but it later served as a deterrent against the Russian fleet during the Cold War. Its two massive guns, known as the Harris batteries, were equipped with 16-inch cannons capable of shooting 30 miles out to sea. During the Cold War, nuclear missiles Ajax and Hercules were housed here. They would have wreaked twice as much havoc as the bomb dropped on Hiroshima if they had ever been utilized. The fort's amenities had largely become obsolete by the early 1970s, and it was abandoned in 1972. Back in the 1950s, the threat of a nuclear attack was a clear and present danger. Both the USA and the USSR believed that a nuclear attack from the other side was inevitable at some stage, so they built extensive contingencies and fallback options. One such contingency is the fallout shelter beneath the Greenbrier Resort at White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, USA. In the event of government buildings being destroyed, this shelter was to become the new home of Congress for as long as necessary. The Eisenhower administration ordered the shelter's creation, which the hotel disguised as the building of a new extension. Its existence remained a state secret until 1992. Some of the features contained in the secret underground base are a little grisly, such as an incinerator designed to dispose of irradiated bodies. Prior to its existence being outed by the Washington Post, the interior of the bunker was kept current with modern furniture, fresh food, and a range of up-to-date reading material. The newspaper article forced its abandonment by the government, and it's now used by a data storage company. We're staying in the USA a little longer, because now we're hopping across to Gun Totem in Providence, Rhode Island, to check out an enormous obelisk that was made with over 1,000 reclaimed guns. It's about as strange a military monument as you're ever likely to see. The obelisk is a little over 12 feet tall and stands in front of the Providence Federal Courthouse. The structure is the work of an artist called Boris Bali, who finished it in 2001 by using guns that he'd acquired via a firearm buyback program in Pittsburgh. There's no danger of anyone digging out any of the guns and making them dangerous again, because every firearm involved in Gun Totem was disabled and then compressed beneath concrete before being added to the monument, fossilizing them in the process. The only reason they're visible to observers now is that layers of the totem have deliberately been stripped back to allow a glimpse at what lies beneath. While the artwork isn't to everybody's liking, Bally is currently in talks with the Pittsburgh gun program again in the hopes he might be able to make a series of arches out of disabled handguns. Now we move from the United States of America to Cuba, because that's where we'll find the shipwreck of the SS San Pascal. This fine old vessel, which saw action during the First World War, served many purposes during its long active life, but is perhaps best known for stinking of rum. It's said that the alcohol scent still lingers to this day, long after it was abandoned. That fact becomes even stranger when you consider the fact that she never once transported rum in her whole career. The San Pascal was damaged by a storm in 1921, and spent the next three years in dry dock 
until she was bought for a knockdown price by the Old Times Molasses Company of La Havana. The business used the ship to store and transport molasses for nine years, but she encountered another storm and sank off the coast of Cayo Las Brujas in 1933. She went down with a hold full of sugarcane. She was raised back to the surface later the same year, by which point the sugarcane had fermented and become rum. She was cleaned out, fitted with cannons, and sent back out to serve in the Second World War. But the stench of rum never faded and was remarked upon by everyone who sailed on her. Making a peace monument out of discarded military hardware might seem like a strange idea, but we've already seen it once with Gun Totem in Rhode Island, and now we see it again here in Lebanon. The creation of Lebanon's Hope for Peace sculpture was all about taking the tools of the military and using them to create something new. The monument was commissioned to celebrate the end of the Lebanese Civil War, which saw peace come to the country in 1990. Putting it all together took five full years, and the full expertise and skill of master designer and artist Armand Fernandez. 78 military vehicles have been repurposed to make the monument, which looks like a building that's been damaged by guns and bombs. It even has military guns pointing out of the sides of the walls, as if it were a defense fortress instead of a work of art. Military enthusiasts might be interested to know that somewhere within the 5,000 tons of concrete are Sherman Fireflies, Charioteer Tank Destroyers, M47 Patton Tanks, Saladin Armored Cars, and multiple anti-tank guns. It's unconventional, but it's better they're used this way than for their original intended purposes. Should the United States of America ever face a sudden and unexpected military threat, it has backup resources to call upon so the country can go to war immediately. One of those resources is the Suisun Bay Ghost Fleet in Benicia, California, which is still listed as active, but there's no way any of these old ships are fit to be sent into battle. It was put together at the end of the Second World War, and as it's never been called upon, it's been rotting away ever since. During its peak years, there were more than 300 ships standing ready in the bay. Today, that's down to barely a dozen, and they're covered in rust. The most notable of those that remain is the USS Iowa, which saw action as a battleship during the Second World War, and once transported President Roosevelt. It was officially decommissioned in 1990, and may still one day be turned into a museum ship. For that to happen, the Iowa is going to need a lot of maintenance work. We suspect that any attempt to move her would result in the old ship falling to pieces immediately. In reality, it's doubtful that any of the remaining ships even have scrap value anymore, and the whole ghost fleet will one day be condemned and scuttled. If you've ever been to the northern Italian highlands, you might be curious about the weird pointy stone constructions that dot the countryside. We'll tell you all you need to know. These strange-looking structures were not left behind by extraterrestrials. Instead, these strongholds make up a fortification called the Alpine Wall. The Alpine Wall was created before World War II, when the Italian government realized it might have to defend itself soon due to ongoing disagreements with France, Austria, Switzerland, and Yugoslavia. Although the mountains provided some natural protection, additional lookout towers and fortifications were built at regular intervals for almost a thousand miles just to be safe. Large forts, bunkers, and point defense forts are the three basic types of fortifications on the wall. Few of them saw even a single day of combat, and some were even handed over to Yugoslavia as war reparations after World War II ended. At the end of the Cold War, what was left of the Alpine Wall was formally demilitarized. Now the story of the wall has been forgotten to such an extent that even some of those who live close to the structures no longer know what they are. Given the scale of the country's involvement in the conflict, it's no surprise that traces of the Second World War may be found all around the United Kingdom. One of the more famous of those physical traces can be seen in the town of Storrington. 
It's just a simple Churchill tank from World War II, yet it's become a landmark in the South Downs area. That's why it's known as the Churchill Tank of the South Downs. It's located towards the foot of Kithurst Hill. Nobody seems to know how it ended up in this location. Even military historians are divided on the subject. The number of bullet holes in the tank indicates that this was formerly a military training site for the Canadian Army, but all of the other equipment was removed after World War II ended. It's possible that this one was too seriously damaged to be dismantled and removed. The Mark II tank has been untouched for 70 years, but it will not be for much longer. This tank has been chosen as an exhibit for a British military museum being built in France to serve as a permanent testimony to the D-Day landings. It has earned that honor after standing alone in the countryside for so long. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!